If you've ever wanted to pull off the Burr method, but you don't have the ability or knowledge to renovate the house yourself, you're going to want to watch today's show. Let's dive in. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry world. Hey folks, welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show here on Holton Wise TV. I'm your host James Wise and today we're doing Burr deals folks. Burr deals. Burr method, Burr strategy, right? It's an acronym, fancy way to talk about buying a house that's really screwed up, renovating that house, putting a tenant in that newly renovated house, then getting the bank to do a refinance. And the goal is for the new the new valuation on that property to appraise for more money than you put into it when you bought it and renovated it, right? Burr, buy, renovate, rent, refinance, and then you repeat the process because you get all your money back and we keep buying properties, okay? And I'm doing that for my man, Bill. My guy, Bill, real estate investor, reached out to Holton Wise, wanted to do some Burr deals, which, by the way, if you guys want to work with my team in the same way I'm working with Bill, just send us an email, sales at HoltonWise.com. Include your phone number. We'll get with you, talk you through the process, get everything going. Or if you're ready to rock, you can go ahead and just click the link below and sign up for the MLS Search and Analysis Show. Uh, Bill already did that. Bill, you ordered three videos, and you want to do some bird deals. You got $120,000 cash to play with. And that's the thing with bird deals. I'm glad you did three videos because, guys, people are not just out there like, Hey, Bill, Bill Z from California, motherfucker. You want some equity? Here's some equity, dog. Take the equity, right? It's not like that, okay? When we're real estate investors, we need to get these properties at very, very low prices, right? So people aren't just like, hey, motherfuckers, take my property, giving it away, right? People aren't just like handing out equity, okay? So we have to do a lot of due diligence. We have to work. We have to analyze a lot of properties, and we're going to have to put in a lot of offers, right? When you guys want to do these bird deals, don't just think that you just get to pluck a bird deal right off the shelf. Like, there's no fucking bird deal store, okay? We have to actually work for these deals. So what I'm doing for you today, Bill, I'm spending all day on you, buddy. I'm doing three properties for you, all potential bird deals. I don't think it's logical to assume we're going to get all three to go down at the price I want it, but that's why we're going to want to put out three offers. And hell, you might not even like all three, so gives you some stuff to compare and contrast, okay? But all three of these I have worked out in a way that you can pull off the bird deal. And this is the first one, 19501 Mohican, Cleveland 44119. Low C, high D uh, type neighborhood, but Bill, you said you have a high risk tolerance at Guys, here's the deal. The more risky uh, the neighborhood is, the more likely you're going to find distressed sellers. The more distressed a seller is, the more likely you could pull off a uh, bur deal. And here's the other thing, too, Bill. You said you wanted to go Section 8, which is what you have to do when we're in these types of neighborhoods. All three of these properties I got for you are going to be bird deals that we're going to want to place Section 8 tenants in, okay? So this one's been on the market for a little while, okay? 71 days, still no bites. Now, they listed at $39.9. I think that price is way too freaking high. What it is is this is a little goofy, right? It's a one-bed, one-bath house, but it's pretty big. It's still 1,200 square feet, right? So that's, like, way bigger than it needs to be. So we have the square footage to make it a two-bedroom. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you right where we're going to put it. Right here, okay? Right off the living room, they have this whole room. It's just wide open. So when we do our renovation, we're going to close this in, make this a second bedroom. The reason it's so important for us to add the second bedroom, Bill, is because we're going Section 8 on this, right? We need to get the two-bedroom voucher tenants to get us a higher uh, rental voucher. Once we do that, once we convert this into a 2-1, we're going to be able to get $900 a month in rent, $10,800 a year on a government-guaranteed Section 8 tenant, okay? Of that $900, I anticipate you spending about half of it, right? Four fifty, dollars okay? Every single month. I think this is going to kick off a total of $5,400 a year in clear profit, right? In addition to the $5,400, note that we got 
about 1500 a little bit over 1500 that we're saving for future issues, right? Future repairs and maintenance, future vacancy and non-payment, future CapEx, okay? So all that is additional money on top of your 5400 profit, okay? Because, yeah, we're going to place some tenants in there. Yeah, they're going to be government guaranteed. But, Bill, there ain't no scenario where they live in your property forever. So we got to save for that, right? Now, here comes the price and the renovation, okay? So... What we got to do thus far, right? I told you, we got to add another bedroom. Now, these kitchen cabinets, the lowers, this like appears to be a pretty newer Home Depot Lowe's quality, so that could be fine. We'll probably want to replace those to get them to match, or my guys could just probably paint everything the same, put the similar hardware on it. Uh, I'll leave that up to the team, but like right here, you see this door, it's all screwed up. I think this was like a dog door or something, but this whole thing, it's all fucked up. So... We need to go in and just do like a, a full reno on this, right? Like you see, they didn't give us much information, but like you got boarded up doors, boarded up windows. So the whole thing's all jacked up, right? So what I've done for you, Bill, is I've laid out a pretty wide worst case scenario, $30,000, right? So I want you to pick it up for twenty two k. We got to go in. We got to be aggressive. But, you know, it's been on market a little while. It's overpriced at 39. We're going to try to get it for 22. That's why it's a numbers game, though. You know, we got to be aggressive, put in multiple offers here. 22K, 30K reno. What that 30K reno is going to entail, Bill? Full cosmetic reno, okay? We're going to be able to go and patch all the holes in all the walls, right? We're going to get all the walls to be agreeable gray with some white trim. We're going to have that kitchen looking good with a vinyl allure flooring that's going to match the bathroom which the bathroom is going to feature a one-piece uh ba ba bathtub shower combo modern fixtures we're going to be able to frame and close in that other room as a bedroom now we should be able to do all of that stuff for you know like 20 maybe like 20 to 22 k okay we should be able to knock all that stuff out in addition we got a roof we got furnace, we got a hot water tank. We don't know if all three of those need replacing, right? We don't know. If you got to replace the roof, it's about five. Got to replace the furnace, it's about three. Got to replace a hot water tank, it's about one, okay? So you do the math. Five, six, seven, eight, that's nine, right? So I think we're going to be like 20 to 22 on the cosmetic reno. Worst case scenario, you're at nine on all three of those big mechanical items. Don't know what we need to do, what we don't need to do. So that's why we ballparked your reno at 30K. Of course, after we get the inspection, we'll know more. Of course, after my uh, renovation team goes in and does the line-by-line -line bid, we would have the exact number, but 30, right? So we're planning for a you know a rough deal here right so 30 so 22 30 all in for 52 you're all in for 52 we get that section 8 tenant in there that's 9 hundo that's a 10.4 cap get the bank to appraise it that's the best part that's why the the bird deals are so great i believe the bank will appraise this property at approximately sixty thousand dollars that's a pretty conservative estimate if they do 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 appraise it at 60k bill they'll give you back 45 so you're all in Cash price, 52 plus the rental, right? So 22 plus 30, 52,000. You spent 52,000. Now we got you a Section 8 tenant in there, fully rehabbed house, all in for 52,000. Bank comes in, they appraise it at 60. They're giving you back 45,000, meaning you only got 7,000 of your dollars stuck into the deal. This sucker is going to come out to be an average annualized cash on cash return of 48 point or 44 rather sorry 44.8 percent that's why the burr strategy is so great that's why the burr method is so great but remember this requires us to pick the property up at 22 they want 39.9 so we have to have some things fall in our favor right if we couldn't pick it up at 30 or 22 and we had to pay 39.9 that doesn't change the fact that the renovation is what it is right there ain't no scenario where you get to just make the renovation less right that's what the fucking property needs right so we have to get the sellers to budge come down to 22,000. I think we got a decent chance, but again, they want almost double that right now. Not every seller's logical, right? That's, you know, I'm a real estate broker. That's that's my day. Sellers are like, "I want to sell my property." I'm like, "Great, your property's worth this." They're like, "No, no, no, it's not it's worth this." I'm like, "No, it's fucking not. You're a fucking idiot. This is what it's worth. I don't give a fuck what you want. This is what the property's worth, bro. If the property's worth 50k, it don't matter to anybody that you want 100K. Ain't nobody going to pay 100K for it, right? That's part of the game of being a real estate investor, right? So they're either going to realize this is what their property's worth, this is what we're going to pay, 
they're going to accept it or they're just going to probably sit there and not sell it. You never know, though. They might come back to us down the road, right? We put out these burr offers and maybe they say no today, but then two more months on the market, maybe nobody picked it up at their price and they really start to realize, oh, maybe my house really ain't worth 39 in its particular shape. Or maybe some other joker who's not smart enough to have worked with a guy like me who could tell you, you know, how to actually make money in these deals. Maybe he's not that smart. He goes in and he overpays. He pays 39 and he ends up underwater on a deal. Well, hey, hey man, good for you, bro. I'm not here to sell you every property in the world, Bill. I'm here to sell you the right property at the right price at the right time. So that's what I think we need to do on this one. And what I'm going to do now is get you your second video right now. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.